be more aware of my hands. Well, a viewer informed me it was annoying, so... <laughs> and... <We're> so hard! <laughs> so... <That is> and... <clears throat> so... Uh, so, and... <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> there's that and again. Still working on it. Sorry, guys. And this is so hard not going. And ooh, I'm working on it. Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little, and this is my podcast all about knitting and other crafty things. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new, welcome. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Thank you. So much has happened. I went on a trip. Things changed drastically from what the original plan was. I'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll get into the knittiness. I have no finished objects. I only have two works in progress. One is a new cast on since I left, and the other one is finishing up something old, but it's new. It's just not done yet. <laughs> we were planning a trip to China because Nick was going to be working there. So long story short, there was an issue with the visa, work visa versus pleasure visa, and the flights, etc. So Nick just scrapped that idea and he ended up surprising me by taking me to Belize and Guatemala. And it was amazing. If you haven't taken a look at my trip video, it was just released last week and it's really just the trip and knitting. <laughs> it was so much fun. I had a great time, very relaxing. Just take a look at the video. I think you'll enjoy it as much as I did. I am terrified of heights. I kept conquering my fears the whole time. One of the coolest things besides going to Tikal, which was amazing, was climbing up a volcano. That was a, an active volcano. That was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Tikal was everything you could want it to be. It was much less busy than Chichen Itza, which is in Mexico. I've been to quite a few sites that are older and grand like that. Tikal was felt less busy. There was also no vendors around the site area in Chichen Itza. There was a lot of vendors and it was a little bit overwhelming. We so, went to another site as well, which we took a hand cranked ferry over to, which you'll see in the video. That site was actually one of my favorites because there was probably 30 other people at that site, maybe. It was just so lovely and quiet. We got to be on the ruins by ourselves for a great portion of the time. We also went to another area that is being excavated. There was nobody there. And we got to hear the howler monkeys, which was also super awesome because I never heard them before and they were, were the sound effects that they used in Jurassic Park. So cool. I did get a bunch of knitting done while I was there. It's not actually something you can get now. I wanted to make sure that I packed something that I had enough yarn to keep me busy. I brought this project. It came with five skeins of yarn. The yarn is Sweet Fiber, Sweet Merino Light, 434 meters, seven, 475 yards in 150 gram, 15 gram skein. Words are hard for me today. I'm sorry, guys. It's 100% superwash merino. It's a single ply and the color is smoke. I had five skeins of this and I thought that that would be not enough. I should have packed less yarn. It took up more space in my suitcase than did my clothing because that's how it is. So I started this project and it is a new design. I've been knitting monogamously lately. Everything that I have been knitting has just been basically one or two things and I've been knitting specifically on that. I hate to not bring more to the table right now 
to you. I got a ton of knitting done, but it's not something that you can actually access right now. It will be coming. I'm going to show it to you. It's almost done. I have a few more skeins to throw into it. I have this, uh, this ball and then I have these two skeins. I don't think it'll use all of it. I just have it just in case. So this is how far I got. It's very, whoops, difficult to see and I just ripped it off the needles. It's gonna take a second and fix that. I wrote this pattern up a few months ago and I'm just working it out now doing my first test knit. It is going to be amazing and epic. Right now, it is just a giant pie shawl. <laughs> it is so simple. I wanted something that would be easy that I didn't need to think about a whole lot. And this fit the bill. I could just sit and knit and knit and knit and knit. Looks like a giant bag, but when it, when it gets blocked out, it'll block out round and flat. I'm using Luka Needles. I've been housing it in my Frog Peaks creation bag and she is on Etsy and her bags are so awesome. They fit such, they fit, she's got many sizes but her big sweater bags fit a lot of yarn so I can still fit all of this which is about three skeins and there's still room for these two so plus the work. So it's a really good size. I opted to bring the Luka interchangeable needles. And the reason I thought that that would be a good idea is because it came with all of the different sizes, plus it's wood. So I was thinking that going on the plane, I would, wood gets through a lot easier. I've never had a problem with wood needles versus I've had problems with metal needles in the past being confiscated. So I wanted to like reduce that as much as possible. I actually ended up bringing the whole, the whole container. I did a little bit of a review while I was knitting with them in Guatemala. I would like to touch base a little bit more on these because I didn't do it as much justice as I should have. So, so these are the looking needles. There's nine sizes that it comes with. They're interchangeable. They come with these little wires that you can add. And there's little pieces. It also comes with ends. So if you're just straight knitting, you can throw on an end. There's enough there. And it comes with these little keys. And this is how you tighten them. You put these two little keys in there's holes and then you twist them in the opposite direction and it tightens them right up. I had no problems with them falling apart. The one thing I will say though is that when you add the cables, the cables are quite stiff. So knitting magic loop would probably, it would probably drive you a little nutty if you tried. Also, all of the cables are this length. There is expanders to make them longer and the expander goes in between, but it makes that hard piece about that long. So you'll have this hard metal section in between. And one thing I found is that my knitting kept getting caught on that spot. So I'd have to stop and, and hoist my knitting around that spot. Plus I added a second one in. So I had two spots my yarn was getting caught up on. The needles themselves were really great to use. I was actually really surprised once I got into it that I enjoyed them as much as I do. I am mostly a metal ne needle knitter. If you've watched previously, you know that that's my preference is slippery fast metal needles. So wood slows me down a little bit and that's just not my jam. So show you where the metal piece is in here. So that's how long the metal piece is and the yarn kept getting caught on that. The stitches kept getting caught on that so I'd have to keep doing this. So I spent a lot of time readjusting stitches. If you're planning on taking Luka Needles traveling, I would suggest you go with a smaller project than something this massive because it's just difficult to wheedle it around constantly. It wasn't 
it didn't annoy me. It just slowed things down. That's all. The needles themselves were great to knit with. It was very humid there. So I was sticky a lot. <laughs> you saw the video. You saw that I was like drenched in sweat because we hiked. It was hot. It was humid. And these performed really well for the most part. When I was in spots that were especially sticky and humid, these would get sticky as well because my hands were sweaty. So that's just what it was. They're very smooth. The yarn didn't get caught on them at all. They're, they're small, the actual um, needles. This is the size I got. You can get you can get longer ones. This is the size that I got because that's what I prefer. And yeah, they they served their purpose. I enjoyed them. I will definitely take them again traveling with me. They are going to finish this project because I want my gauge to remain the same, so I'm going to continue on and finish with these. I did enjoy them. They the joins are fairly smooth. They slowed me down, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Relaxing meditative knit, I would say. And that is my first project. My next project goes along with the knit along that I'm hosting right now. It is the Skaha Sweater Cal, and you can join by going down into the down bar. There is a link to the group, and you can go in and check that out. It ends, it started August 1st, and it ends November 31st. So that is coming up very quickly. So if you are going to try to knit a sweater in a week, then you could probably do it. It's a fairly quick knit, and if you do a smaller size, then you got it. <laughs> Yesterday, I cast on my first sleeve, and I've attached it. So that sleeve is done. When I picked up the Skaha sweater again, I realized that I was a couple inches short in the body. So I just knit those up last night, added the first sleeve, and then I cast on the second sleeve. So this is how far I am. I have about two more increase repeats, and then I just have some straight knitting to get the length that I need, which is about 22 inches. The yarn I'm using is Madeline Tosh. And I have two different dye lots. It's Madeline Tosh in the Smokestack colorway, number 196. There we go. And the reason I have two different colorways is because of the great yarn debacle of 2018. And so they are a little bit, a little bit different. I'm alternating skeins. I've learned my lesson. I'm alternating and that is what I'm doing. I have always been terrible at alternating skeins. I always end up with bubbles and like weird weirdness when I change colors and it ends up driving me bananas. I've been trying something new with this though with alternating the skeins. What I've been doing is where I change my color I have actually been changing color at a different spot each time. So I carry the yarn over one more stitch and then, and then change skeins. So it's never in the same spot. It's not creating weird lines or, or anything. Uh, and there's, there's a little bit of something in one spot, but I'm thinking that blocking is just going to take that out. See, that's the one little spot, but it's, I carried the yarn for like, changed colors quite a bit so it's yeah I don't once it's blocked I don't see that as being an issue blocking hides a multitude of sins I'd say this is a great knit I enjoy it so much this is my fourth time knitting it it's very intuitive it's really using this yarn is amazing it's actually a chunky yarn which means it knits up at a larger gauge so what I had to do is I went down a needle a couple needle sizes to get gauge so that it's not huge <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got gauge and 
and the person it's for likes a dense fabric, so I'm really excited about that. This will be done before the end of our knit along, so it will be done in time. Those of you who are still working on it, you still have time, just plunk away, it's great. We already have a ton of finished objects in the thread and I'm so excited to announce the winner. I'll be announcing that in two weeks because we have a couple more weeks before November is over, so I haven't drawn a winner yet, and I won't until the end of the month, of course. The prize for the Skaha sweater cal is four skeins of your choice of color of yarn, and I will send that to you. I will show everybody what the color choice is before I mail it out, so I'm really excited about that because... I love to give away yarn. A really amazing thing about the trip was how much the fiber arts play a role in Guatemala. It wasn't so much in Belize, but in Guatemala it definitely was. I went to a couple different places where they had um, yarn and fiber. Most of it is used for weaving. So that was one thing that I ran into when I was there. But I did pick up at one place, I picked this up and it's cotton and it's used for embroidery or weaving, but I will use it for knitting, of course. And it's just in this little, little bag. We found this place on the way from lunch one day, so. And it's got a little bit of sparkle. I don't, I don't know what, what the whole base is. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the fiber is, but it's beautiful. And then when we were on, when we were in La Paz in Guatemala, we went to, we went to two La Paz's, one in Guatemala and one in Belize. The one in Guatemala, uh, I happened to find this beautiful yarn. I got three different colors and it's silk. It's beautiful. This silk is from there. They create, dye, process it all there. And for all three of these, they're about a, a lace weight or a thread weight. They're very light. So I will probably use all three together to create something. I have no idea on yardage. This is how they came. They are so beautiful and so soft, but the cost in Canadian was about 75 cents for all of these. So I couldn't not, <laughs> and they're so beautiful. They're definitely my color palette and I love them. So that's that. So that's it for the knitting and there's a little bit of traveling stuff in there. There's something else that I did yesterday that that I did two days ago that was a lot of fun. I made some candles. So this candle is, it's a citrus blend smell and I used doTERRA essential oils to make it smell so yummy. So it smells like honey and citrus and it, the wax is actually from our bees. So I processed a bunch of honey the other day and I used the wax and melted it down and purified it and then just created this these beautiful candles. I have about four beeswax, and I also had some paraffin wax that was from a, wa a candle making kit that I got like 20 years ago or so, and I used some Holiday Joy doTERRA essential oils. Mm, it smells so good. Melted that down, and I made about six of these candles. So they are so awesome. They smell so great. And these are going to be part of my homemade Christmas gifts this year. That's something that I really wanted to do was homemade gifts. I have some other ideas for things I'm going to do as well. Wax is messy. And I actually ended up spilling a little bit on the floor, which was a pain to get off because we have bamboo hardwood floors in the kitchen and so that was that was a chore and a half to get off without scratching the floors but I did it and it's okay 
These smell great. If you are thinking of making some gifts that are quick, that are still handmade and heartfelt, may I suggest you make some candles? So I have those set aside for for gifts for my friends and and if I happen to forget to give some get somebody a gift, I'll have those and then I will be able to just pull one out and give it to them. I have one more acquisition. Before I left, a new Etsy shop opened up and it is called Lonely Knitter Crafts. It opened up right before I left or a couple weeks before I left and I was one of her very first purchases. It came right before I left and I ordered this Mickey Mouse bag. It's so cute. I just adore it and it's got polka dot fabric on the inside, which I love. This is a really good size bag for probably socks and hats, that sort of thing. Something small, a shawl, maybe one skein shawl, maybe a two skein shawl might fit in here. It's got a nice box bottom. And she also sent this lovely little container that's got little stitch marker bag that's got some stitch markers in it and the bag actually came with stitch markers as well. Stitch markers and a little little tease, a little snack and, a, and just a little cute little note. And the inside fabric is as cute as the outside fabric so I'm super happy with that. This is definitely going to be used a lot. And I love it. I haven't purchased a bag since the spring. I feel like this one is just super happy. It's vintage Mickey Mouse and that just feeds all of the happiness. Speaking of happiness, I've already started listening to Christmas music. This is, I know it's early, but you guys, I haven't actually had like this much excitement for Christmas in years. It's been years since I've been this excited. I started listening to Christmas music. It's getting me in the mood. I'm really excited to start getting because it's last minute. And this is me. We're talking about start knitting some Christmas gifts. I thought about that last year and I had all of these plans to knit all of these things for people before Christmas and I never got it done. I don't know if I'm going to get this done. I'm going to try to vlog it and then I'll show you if I get it done. Otherwise, it'll just come across as finished objects on the podcast. So that's coming up too. I'm also hosting a knit along. This episode is all over the place. I'm also hosting a knit along that is to finish up all of the unfinished objects. It's called Project UFO. It's going to January 1st, I'm trying to get everything off the needles. There's a link to the thread below and you can go to Ravelry, put in a picture of the unfinished object and then when it's finished in the same post and that is one entry. You can enter for as many projects as you have. It just has to show a picture of it not finished and then the picture of it finished and then it will be entered into the draw. You can go in and enter all of your unfinished objects and I will only pull a winner from the ones that include the ones that actually got finished and, and have that. So I'm very excited about that. I can't believe it's almost December. This year has flown by so fast. There's been so much, so much went on in my house. So much went on in my house. And I lost a ton of momentum. I didn't record at all during the summer. Well, you guys know that. I have some plans for this room. I think I'm going to change it around so I'll be recording with a more neutral background instead of all of this stuff in the background. I don't necessarily want to see all of this stuff in my background. So I'm going to switch things around so that it'll clean it up a bit and it'll look nicer. And I think that's it for me. So super quick today. Thanks for joining me. If you are planning on some last minute knitting before Christmas, let me know in the comments below what you're making because I might want to make it too. If you are not a Christmas gift knitter, that's okay too. If you're working on something special for yourself, Put that below as well because I want to see what you're making. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up. And if you're new, please hit the subscribe button. That is it for me for today. Until next time.